Hey, welcome to the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast with me, Rob Kosberg. Every week, I interview thought leaders and experts who have used the book to grow their income and their impact. So tune in weekly for these interviews so you can learn how to use your own best-selling book and go from hunting for clients and opportunities to instead being the hunted. Hey, welcome everybody. Rob here to our Publish Pro Profit podcast. I have a very, very unique book to discuss today and a great friend to discuss it with, Mr. Perry Marshall. For those of you that don't know Perry, number one, you should be ashamed of yourself. He's definitely someone that you should know. He's one of the most expensive business strategists in the world, endorsed by Forbes, Inc. Magazine. Perry, you've done some very, very unique things. You have the largest science research prize ever, the $10 million Evolution 2.0 prize, which is so cool. You reinvented the Pareto Principle, and it was published in the Harvard Business Review. And of course, if people do know you, then more than likely they might know you from you know, your definitive book for Google AdWords uh, that laid the foundation to the $100 billion pay-per-click industry and maybe even Evolution 2.0. And you've written, I don't know how many books now, 10 or so. So today's book, Mr. Perry, thank you for being with us. We're going to talk about memos from the head office. I think most people are used to me interviewing authors that are like you, but uh, have written about their expertise and written uh, something that could maybe very directly help with their business. I want to be careful how I even say some of these things because, I mean, you know, this is about tapping into divine inspiration, tapping into your muse, tapping into the source, as some might say, the universe, as others might say, the Holy Spirit, as others might say. And uh, wow, there's not an area of your life that goes untouched when you do tap into that. So so if you're listening for business purposes, keep listening. So anyway, gosh, was that a long introduction or what? Uh (laughs) You're exactly right. And just to kind of trace a pattern here, I wrote the Google Ads book in 2003 when Google was just coming along and it helped a lot of people. I mean, it was it was super obvious, like I'm a plumber, I am a I bake cakes and I need Like, I need people to come to my website. I need customers. This is like, it was like selling crack cocaine. Like, you want some, right, or not. And so that worked, and it was great. Well, 10 years go by, and now the question was, you know, the real secret to Google Ads was 80-20. Do you think people would buy that? Because that's like the universal tool. Like, Google could change their algorithm tomorrow. Google could go out of business, or they could be bought out or whatever. Right. All this if I wrote in that book could be obsolete. 80-20 is not going to go obsolete. Right. Would people have an, an appetite for that? Well, I don't know. Let's try it. And Rob, you're in the book business. You yeah. There's no guaranteeing anything, right? Nope. We put it out there and the world, it was like, wow, this is cool. I never saw the world this way. Well, it was like 80-20 was the secret sauce behind Google. Well, you know what the secret sauce behind 80-20 was? It was a memo from that office. Right. Okay. And and so it's like, and I think a lot of us sort of know this, that the world gets our stories as layers of an onion. It's like, Hey, this is useful. You know, like I can't give you everything I got and most stuff I got ain't going to be useful to you, but here you can use this, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll take it. Right. And then you go another step further, like, well, you know, I think this is even more important. And I'm like, actually, I think this is more important. Yeah. And like, well, we'll we'll see if the world accepts it. But at least, you know, we we got some Amazon reviews and we got some people that really like it. And I've already been doing this for 10 years with people in my little enclave over here. And it, it was just time. Well, let's put it up the flagpole and see if anybody salutes. Yeah. Well, I love it. You obviously, you sent me a PDF of it before the book was even out. Thank you for doing that. I devoured it. I've had my own uh, very specific, one in particular powerful memo that was life-changing for me, which, you know, at another time I can probably share about. I don't want to take this time away from you, but you're an interesting person because you are a spiritual person and have a spiritual foundation, but you're an engineer. And oftentimes, you know, right? Like there can be like a pull there, you know, a a challenge. And I see it in you. I see it in the evolution 2.0. I see it in the memos. 
talk to me a little bit about that for somebody that's listening and says, oh, you know, that's hocus pocus or or whatever. And you've had to deal with this stuff yourself. Totally. So the best starting point of this is when it actually started. So okay. and it starts with Perry, the engineer. Yeah. So 2003, I read Richard Kosh's 80-20 book and I'd heard of 80-20 and like most people have heard of 80-20 and most people probably, oh, yeah, OK, 20 percent of the people own 80 percent of the land. Yeah, whatever. Right. Well, that's what I knew. Then I read his book and he my mind set on fire because on page 14, he made this comment. And the comment was 80-20 has a lot to do with chaos theory. And I was like, oh, wait, hey, wait a minute. I got a bunch of books about that. I know about that. That means there's a pattern and a pattern and a pattern and a pattern. It's like those Russian dolls. Yes. 80-20s like Russian dolls? I never had that thought before. Like there's an 80-20 inside an 80-20. Wait a minute. Like, ooh. And like in 10 seconds, I just had this, my head started on fire. And after I had had some time to think about it, it's like, well, that means there's a formula. What's the formula? And so... This one day, it was a Friday, it was in March 2003, and all day long, I was just ruminating on this, hey, there's a formula, what is it? And I was also obsessing about something else. I have a very obsessive personality, <laughs> like most entrepreneurs, Bob. <laughs> and I had just a few days before had one of these rock, like caveman discovers fire moments in my business. I did something, it made quite a bit of money, more money than I was used to making in one day. And I was like, whoa, wow, can I use, you know, can I use this magical money power to help the project in Mozambique? My brother-in-law was running a school, a church, a feeding program, an AIDS hospice, all these poor people. My wife had been there. And so I was thinking about literally calculus in Mozambique all day long. Like I said, I'm an engineer. And, but I was stuck. I was like, I'm looking on the internet. I can't figure this out, but this would probably be really useful if I could. All right. So I go to this church thing. They're playing music on a Friday night. And it's just this Pink Floyd kind of flowy music <laughs> thing. And, and I'm standing there and I'm swaying and I'm, in, I, I'm a million miles away. And I'm, I'm thinking about math equations and I'm thinking about Mozambique. And I look up in this black woman. I've never seen her in my life. She walks straight towards me. She sticks out her hand. She says, hi, my name is Vivian, and the Lord gave me a word for you. Now, I have heard of stuff like this. <laughs> it has never happened to me. I didn't come from a place where people do stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, well, this should be interesting. And without hesitating, she goes, the Lord told me that you're very good at math and you work in some kind of equation, some kind of formula, some kind of invention, and you're going to figure it out. Just keep working and you're going to figure it out. And I instantly flip into engineer mode and I look around and I think it is eight o'clock on a Friday night at a church. There's like 30 people in here. What are the chances that any of us are working on a math problem <laughs> right now? Right. I've never seen this woman before. I have no idea who she is. Right. And so I'm doing math. I'm doing statistics in my head, like one in a thousand, one in a hundred, like, and then she turns to walk away and then she spins around. She goes, oh, and he told me something else too. You want to support missions and God is going to bless your business so you can support missions. Okay. If I could shrug off the first one as a coincidence two in a row from a complete stranger. And she nailed what I've been thinking about all day long. And I had not talked to anybody about this. Dang. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> okay. This got my attention. And as an engineer, I start thinking through, okay, is there any way to explain this through any normal means? Like, I don't have strangers walking up to me ever telling me what I'm thinking about. This does not happen. Right. I don't think this has ever happened. Whoa. Like, that was a memo from the head office. Yeah. Dude, like, you need to stop. You need to absorb that. You need to, like, load it into your program. Obviously, you better keep working on that math problem because apparently this is pretty important which I don't know that I would have kept going. 
I might have been happy to just draw it on a napkin, have the general idea, and that would be it. No, right. like go figure out this formula, okay? And the other part of that, God is going to bless your business so you can support missions. To me, that felt like permission. Mm. Okay, now Rob, you come from a faith orientation, or at least you have one now. Yep. And there are lots and lots of people with a faith orientation who have their foot on the money break. Okay. Yep. My right foot is on the break and my left foot just mashed down the emergency brake just in case, <laughs> you know, just in case this car ever starts moving. Right. Like, okay. And you know, I came from a very puckered, clenched up sort of, you know, background as far as money. My, my parents did not have very much money. My faith community was very suspicious of money. They were always happy to take, when they had the building fund, they, they were always happy to take it, okay? Right, but right. The inner conflict around this was very strong. And what I got from that was, dude, take your foot off of both brakes and put your foot on the accelerator because you're trying to do good things in the world and it's it's time to stop second guessing yourself. I love that, that's what I took away from it. Yeah. Okay, so what happened? Well, two things happened. The first thing that happened was later that summer, my business took off. Why did it take off? It took off because three days before I met Vivian, a guy had said, Perry, I think you should speak on Google AdWords at my seminar. And I accepted and I knew, I immediately knew what that meant. If you're going to go on the seminar circuit, you better have a product you can sell. You better have a book. You better have a course. So I wrote this book called Definitive Guide to Google AdWords. And it came out about three or four months later. And it came out right at the moment that Google started hitting the hockey stick. Yeah their ad program really started catching on. And within, well, within two years, I had been on an entire magic carpet ride, which again, as a book guy, like when somebody has a hit book, even in a niche, it was like nobody in like the Wall Street Journal world had any idea what was going on. But the people in the marketing world, they all knew this, sure. okay? And Harry's the guy, okay? And so it was actually a little shocking but it happened, right? And my business grew like crazy. I'm getting invited to speak to Australia and all kinds of stuff, right? The other thing that happened was three years later, I finally figured out the math formula. Wow. I work on it. I get stuck, put it on the shelf, come back to it. It's like, well, the lady said I'm supposed to work on this. I don't know why, I keep, you know, is this supposed to be easy? I don't know. I don't think this is easy. But finally, three years later, I figured it out. And then I went on to use it. There's a website. It's connected to the 80-20 book that I sell. It got published in Harvard Business Review. And so this is like my signature story of the engineer comes to an inevitable conclusion. There is this other aspect. It's mystical. You can't explain it like with calculus equations. Right like an accountant or a bookkeeper is not going to connect all the dots, but this definitely happens. This woman, Vivian stepped into my life, told me this. I listened to her. It completely changed my career. It really built a foundation for an entire subculture that we've created around it. And it was like, well, that wasn't the only time it was just the first one and so I wrote this book because now it's 18 years later and all of the stuff has happened and more stuff has happened and more stuff has happened. And there's an entire story. So what this book really is, it's probably 25% me yeah. kind of weaving bits and pieces of my story. But then it's kind of like chicken soup for the soul where there's all these other people. Yeah. It's like, oh, all these, I have all these friends and colleagues and these things have happened to them. Like, Shannon Stewart, it was February 2020. She has vivid, crazy dreams three nights in a row. She's like, oh, this happened to me in 08. I know what this means. The markets are about to tank. She is a financial advisor, registered, whatever, all the letters behind her name stuff. She tells all of her clients, 
pull your money back into cash. And three days later, the COVID thing starts to hit Asia. Wow. Okay. Now this is like, she's got emails back and forth with her, the, the regulatory people (laughs) going, Hey, how did you know? (laughs) Why did you tell, like, you don't just like pull something out of your butt. Why did you tell your clients to do this? Like you are a registered financial advisor. She's like, uh, God told me to. And, and they're like, uh, that's not an answer. She's like, you don't think that's an answer, right? <laughs> like she's willing to deal with the flat that wow. they give. Her she's that. a brave lady. <laughs> but it's incontestable. Like, yeah. I can't crawl inside her brain and verify that she had a dream, but I can. You can look at the email she sent to her clients. She, you can look at the trail of emails with her regulatory people. Like these things happen. Okay. Right. And, and one of the things I wanted to do, there's a part of this book that is written for the engineers. Okay. Everybody loves a great story. The engineers hope it's true, but they're secretly afraid it's not. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I had enough details and documentation, names, dates, places, locations. There's an appendix. You can go on the web and you can look up the names and the websites of all the people in this book. Like, you know, one of them used to manage $60 billion of assets for Mesero Financial. Like, this is a publicly accessible guy with a huge professional reputation. And he's talking about you know, going to the coffee shop and getting a download about like how to do a currency trade while he's talking to his friend over coffee. I and love that makes, story. And he makes very high level professional decisions based on literally praying and asking for an answer. And I believe that people of faith should have the courage to write it down, document it, shoot the videotape, take the picture. Uh, have the chain of emails, be able to prove like, no, this actually happened because there's a switch that happens. Okay. You're the skeptical engineer and you're like, Hey, wait a minute. This is real. Mm. Hey, wait a minute. I might not get this right all the time. And that channel, you know, there's noise, there's static, there's okay. We, we all get that. But if you know that, you know, that, you know, that at least some of the time, those intuitions, those messages are accurate and you can rely on them. Wow. You have a whole different level of confidence and you will do things you would never do. And and the thing is, Rob, how many thousands and thousands of books are about the business strategy and the spreadsheet and the case study? And, you know, that's all great. I'm in that business. But, But let me ask you a question. How many great business ideas or great works of art or great inspirations, they came as a download. You can't prove them. There's not a calculus formula. There's not a spreadsheet. There's not a documentary. But like J.K. Rowling got Harry Potter in like a two or three hour download on a stalled train. And she scribbled the stuff as fast as she could. She kind of got the, the idea of the story fixed in her mind. And then she spent, I don't know, seven years smoothing it out, working out all the details, making it comprehensible. But it was, it all sort of came at once. Now, how do you explain this? Right. Are you going to tell me that it was just some random synapse firing in her brain? Come on. (laughs) And somebody needed to write a book about that. Well, I'm glad you did. You share some things in the book and thank you for telling that story. It's a great story. Uh, Really. I mean, it's, it's powerful. And there are two things that I love. I am not an engineer, uh, but I think I have some DNA. And I need, at least I find this myself, like I have my notebook out and I'm reading memos and I started writing down, okay, how do I do this? As though I pray every day, right? I mean, (laughs) and I'm like, okay, well, how do I do this? And, you know, you gave some very simple and uh, kind of great advice on, you know, asking for a picture was one of the things that you you talked about. And you've like gone deep in this. Uh, you now have memos calls. I'm part of the Renaissance group. And I don't know who all gets access to the memo calls. I know we do as part of the Renaissance group. I'm not sure who else is. That might be even something we want to give a link to at, at some point. At the end. 
Yeah. Um, but talk to me about like some of the structure that you've created now around this idea for people, like how to do it, what the memos calls are, et cetera. So like you can go to perrymarshall.com slash memos. You can get three free chapters in the book. And, and we include a like a one page listening guide because most people have absolutely no idea how to do this. It's right. like, you want me to do what? Like, what are you even talking about? Right. Listen to what? <laughs> like, do you think I'm crazy? Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. I guess. Okay. Even as a spiritual person, I'm like, how do I do it? It's the first thing I thought was I need to get my notebook out and figure out what the heck we're talking about. Yeah. So here's the simplest way to do it. You wake up in the morning. You don't get out your iPad. You don't turn on the TV. You don't do your phone. You don't, you don't interact with anybody. Go get your cup of coffee and sit down with a notebook and a pen. And here's what you do. You sit down and you just get the pen moving. And really, it's anything that's going on in your head. Like, well, that was an interesting dream I just had. Or I had this idea in the shower or pushing the kid on the swing last in the park yesterday was so wonderful. It could be anything like that. But first of all, you're listening to your own inner voice and you are, here's the thing, you are not composing and your editor is switched off. So it's kind of like, okay, if you have a stick shift car and you park it at the top of a hill and you you let out the emergency brake and you put the gear shift in neutral you maybe didn't even turn it on and you let it roll wherever it wants to roll. If it's right. forward, it's forward. If it's backwards down the hill, it's back. But you're just going to let it go wherever it wants to go. It's almost like hands off the steering wheel. Now, the funny thing is, at this point, I do not care whether it's you or God, or the universe, or the muse. I don't care who or what you're listening to. Your job is to just listen. Now, this is a bigger deal than it sounds like, because by the time I was about 30, I had taken some pretty bad spills in my career. I had taken some very bad long turns, and I could notice in hindsight that I had a tap on my shoulder about several of those things I had ignored. Right. Okay. And all of us like have that, right? Like I knew better. Like if I'm really honest with myself, I knew better. Yeah. Okay. I had shut off my own inner voice between the head and the heart. I had inserted a blockage in there. Harry, just think, just think, just think, right. which is really believable for an engineer. Like, well, you know, I had a boss from hell and I, I didn't pay attention to a, a, like a, an inkling I had about that guy. And then he came on board, a, a whole business thing I shouldn't have gotten into. Well, my contention is if you can't even listen to yourself, forget ever hearing anything else. Right. right. You're not going to hear anything. Okay. And then, okay, pile CNN and Facebook on top. You're lost, man. Like, you are screwed. <laughs> you don't know how screwed you are. Right. <laughs> so, start out. Get your pen, get your notebook, and just go. And just get it going. Maybe you're upset about something. Maybe you're angry at your spouse. Maybe you're really happy about pushing the kid on the swing. Whatever. You just let that start going. And remember, if you're editing or composing, you're doing it wrong. Right. Right. It's like whatever you hear, whatever you see, whatever you feel, you're just going to go with it. Okay. Now, at some point, it's pretty easy to go, hey, whoever you are, hey, I got a couple questions here. And here you have the courage to ask the question and then write whatever comes. You do not edit. You do not question. And here's the thing. Is that God or the muse or a bad burrito? You do not have to figure this out anytime soon. Right. All you have to do is capture it. Just get it on the piece of paper. You can decide tomorrow afternoon. You can decide next week. You can decide next month. The thing is to get it out, to get the blockage unblocked and get yourself flowing. Yeah. 
you can figure out the God stuff. You can figure out all that stuff later. Right. Well, it took you three years, right, to actually come up with the 80-20 formula after, I guess, that night in 2003. So it's not like the answer is necessarily immediate, but you logged it away and never forgot. Right. And J.K. Rowling years to... Yeah. You know what I think of it is you ever eat a, a, a candy bar with an aluminum a foil wrapper and then you sit there and you like you, you take your finger or your pen and you smooth it like <laughs> you smooth it flat. You push the wrinkles out like I don't know. I do that sometimes. <laughs> OK, that's what J.K. Rowling had to do with Harry Potter. Right. It came as a download, but she had to sort it out. I had an epiphany about 80-20. I had to sort it out. This is how all these things have been. But what I found is you sort this out a lot faster with the car in neutral gear with the emergency brake off than when you're trying to always drive it somewhere. And sometimes you got to drive. That's fine. But most of us, we are so used to driving all the time. Drive, 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 drive. Yeah. We have completely forgotten, you know, I really hate doing this. Why am I doing this? I don't like this business. I don't like this job. I don't like the situation. Or this is a complete waste of time. Or, well, you know, this other thing really inspires me way more. But I'm so, uh, I'm going to jam square pegs into round holes. Right. It is so much easier to exist in the world when you actually listen to yourself, listen to God, listen to the muse, let it flow. And so I, I've had so much feedback from so many people who are like, Perry, this totally changed my life. Yeah. It's like there comes a time when you have to just put it out there and let people hear the whole story. Yeah. I love it. You know, there's a one of my favorite scriptures is uh, in James. And uh, James tells us that we should ask God for wisdom. And uh, the favorite part of that to me is not that. It's that God gives uh, to all who ask without finding fault. And, um, you know, I think we can get wrapped up in, like you said some things like, you know, you don't know, hey, guy up there or muse or bad burrito, right? Um, <laughs> right? I mean, it, you know, and, and someone may hear that that's maybe very dogmatic and go, that's wrong or, or whatever. But, you know, there is this sense, I think, at least – my convictions from what I've read that, you know, there's this non judgmental answer that we can get to our questions. And it, you know, if, if you believe in the New Testament, it says it clearly right in there that he's not looking for fault. We all got fault, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. He'll answer without looking for your fault or judging. It's very cool. Yeah. Well, yes. And, and if you're in the Christian or Jewish tradition, I would just ask you a question. How many people clearly outside of the club <laughs> heard from God? Yeah. Like a lot? A lot. More than you realize unless you really stop and think about it. Like, okay, even Pilate's wife was like, hey, dude, yeah. I had a really bad dream last night. Do not do this. Right. Like, <laughs> what club was she a part of? Like, right, right. she sure wasn't in any of the clubs, you know, right? But she got a memo from the head office, like, you tell your husband. And then he didn't listen to her. Like, yeah, well, he's like the most corrupt government official on record. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And, and, and so, wow. you know, I grew up in a super rigorous, scholarly Christian tradition where you dot all the I's and you cross all the trees and you, and you read all the scriptures. And the people I grew up around would have a hissy fit over this book. Yeah. Okay. And really it's, <laughs> well, <laughs> boy, that's like a whole conversation, but, but look, <laughs> here's the thing. See, most people, especially religious people think it all starts with a theological construct and a statement and all this kind of stuff. I have a different proposition for you. It starts with hearing the voice. Mm, wow. Very cool. And, and I challenge you to name any major person in the biblical story who plays a major part who didn't hear the voice. Yeah. Yeah. They all were like, in fact, 
the ability to hear the voice is taken as a given and generally not even questioned. Yeah. The prophets, you know, Isaiah, Jeremiah, David, all these, right? Or, you know, Samuel, you know, Samuel, Samuel, right. like right. four year old kid in the, in the night, right? The voice is like, hey, hey, dude, I got a job for you. Right. And that's where it starts. And so what I found was I didn't have to be dogmatic. You could be Jewish, Catholic, New Age, agnostic, Buddhist, whatever. Listen to the non-judgmental voice and let the voice love on you. Mm, Beautiful. Perry, I love it. That's a great place to end. We've given a lot of content. I mean, here's the bottom line. We... I want people to, to get this book, and um, I think it could change a lot of lives and certainly open up people's eyes to maybe what has been causing stoppage in various areas of their life that, you know, because they've they've cut off their own voice and, and can't hear the memo. So obviously they can get it on Amazon. You mentioned that they can get the first three chapters. Why don't you give that link again and any other links that we want to direct people to? So if you go to perrymarshall.com slash memos, you can get three free chapters on the book. And we have memo sessions for our paying members. We also make regular announcements of we're having a session. Anybody can come. We ask for a donation of any size. You give a dollar. You could give $500. Like we don't care, like whatever you feel like doing. And so we do make these available. And we have we have people who's I know they're listening here to be very well developed and they'll get on a zoom or a go to webinar and they'll just go. It'll be like Jennifer F go Rob K go. And they don't know who you are, they, but they'll just ask for a memo and they'll give it. And there's a bunch of stories about some of that in the book and love it. You're like, I just, I want people to be able to dip their toe in the water, try this out not feel threatened, not be afraid, and ask for wisdom and get it. Yeah, I love it. Perry, thanks. Thanks for putting yourself out there. This is a long way, but I see the thread now, but it is a long way from the definitive guide to Google AdWords. <laughs> uh, but I, I, but I, you you threaded it together. I, I had never noticed that. I'm like, there it is. But it is a long way from there. And uh, you're putting yourself out there. And I respect that. And, and I appreciate that. So, uh Go get the book, is what I'll say. Well, thank you for having me on. And, you know, you're probably even taking a little risk. This is a crazy conversation. This is... That it is. <laughs> this, is this is not what you typically talk to the next person about at the Department of Motor Vehicles. Right, right, <laughs> right. I Well, I have, a, I have a podcast interview coming up in just a little bit, and we're not going to talk about any of this, I'm sure. <laughs> so I love it. I love, I love that it's uh, real, it's raw, it's honest. And I think, you know, you know what I do think, and I was thinking about this, I think this is going to give people, and you said the word permission, like it gave you permission to be successful in your business. And if anybody has a spiritual background, they know what you're talking about when I know immediately, right? There's that guilt, there's that gnawing, you know, you're making a lot of money and you're really not supposed to, right? Because you can't serve both God and money, which I just read this morning, coincidentally, Uh, (laughs) Matthew 6. But, you know, I think this is going to give people permission to leave the judgment aside and look for some memos. And so... Love it, brother. I'm so glad that you're on, and uh, I hope lots of people get the book. Thank you. Appreciate you, Rob.